Hello and welcome to Half Time Report. I'm Sonia and joining me today is Mangala Malu. Well, it is a very, very quiet day so far of trade. But of course, we do know that it comes on the back of a lot of losses for the market. Five days straight, the Nifty has been under pressure. And even today, although the headline index may look flat, we've come off quite a bit from the highs of trade. The sell on rally uh, strategy is something that's intact. The bears have been in complete control of this market for many days. There's no recovery in the bank Nifty either. Let's see how the rest of the day shapes up but for now it looks like you know um it's a bit on the back foot for the bulls. It is a bit on the, the back foot for the bulls and it's also middling ground right now, right? Uh, we're in the middle of a Friday after a big decline, start of a new series, a lot of triggers for this series as well. March is usually known to be one of those big moving series, right? March 2020, we had the COVID-related impact, so the Nifty was down about 3,000 odd points. Thereafter, the Nifty was down 700 points, but the last March, March 2022, we saw an up move of almost 1,200 odd points. So, it's not a series for the faint-hearted. Yeah. Uh, before, uh, so is, is this the calm before the storm or not is something that we will know. But today, we have the mid-cap index, which oh, is... Oh, is the storm underway? Because it's been five underway. days already, yes. right, for the market uh, correcting. Totally. But we've, we've seen a thousand-point decline in the last three yes. months already. So, we will monitor things as uh, they go. The Nifty Bank, however, holding above that 40,000 mark, the Nifty Bank around 17,500. So, it's actually the perfect time to, uh, you know, talk about coffee. We have uh, CCL Products, the first corporate on our show. The stock has had a decent run in the last one year, 30% uh, on the stock price move. Uh, the third quarter performance was also in line with street expectations. The coffee business reporting four times profit, of course, uh, due to you know income tax, other income, etc. But we do have with us uh, Chala Srisant, who is the MD of the company, joining us. Chala, always a pleasure speaking with you. Uh, recently, you met a bunch of analysts as well. Um, just trying to understand uh, your uh, volume growth for the fourth quarter, because the third quarter, of course, was impacted by a couple of shutdowns as well. What are you targeting this time around? Uh, so actually, whatever volume growth that we have projected for this year, we are on track for that. We project about 20 to 25 percent. We'll be closer to the 25 percent mark uh, because this uh, quarter, the Vietnam facility is also coming online. So we'll have some additional uh, output that's going to come because of that. Okay. Uh, so what in terms of additional output, I mean, what are you looking at? I think you said that you would end FY23 with about 200 crore revenue in the branded business particularly. Uh, the volume growth guidance was about 20 to 25%. I'm sure you hold on to that. But uh, what is the outlook for FY24? What kind of growth could you do? So uh, FI24, it's a bit too early for us to comment right now. Sure. I think after this year ends, uh, next uh, quarter, we'll be able to comment better. Uh, but we are looking at definitely a double-digit growth. Uh, uh, at least 15 to 20% is what we are internally targeting. And if, the, if things are favorable, it might cross that as well. 20% growth uh, in FI24 volumes. Obviously, this uh, comes on the back of a lot of uh, the expansions that you've planned, etc. as well. But Chara, you know, uh, I'd like to uh, speak to you apart from the coffee business, which is a pretty straight uh, ad capacity, ad clients, run capacity, make money sort of business, to a new vertical. I mean, you are increasing your focus towards the FMCG business as well. You've announced uh, the demerger. Uh, just from a skill set standpoint, I mean, how is it different? Are you adding some management talent out there? Are you looking to increase distributors? Because uh, business-wise, both of them are chalk and cheese, right? What are your plans there? So we are creating a separate team and this team is also focused on uh, introducing products, sampling. So there are a lot of common services that are there between the various uh, verticals that are there. And there is a dedicated team also that's focused on these products, like the mock meat products. So the response has been quite good. So we are introducing in new cities as well and uh, expanding over there as well. And what categories are you looking to enter? I mean, mock meat, of course, very niche and very early stage as well. Coffee is a big category, but then again, you have established players out there. What are the other mm -hmm. categories? I, I'm, uh, you know, I read you are looking at some adjacencies as well. Are you looking at cookies? Are you looking at cake? You, <laughs> what is it? What goes with coffee? I don't think I could comment on that right now, but uh, maybe in the next couple of months, we should be in a position to announce something. Okay, in the next couple of months, looking at some announcements yeah. from CCL products, we'll be waiting for that. Uh, can you tell us, you know, you had mentioned that your new Vietnam capacity will be commissioned by Q3 of FI25. And it will be driven by spray dried coffee. Now, I, I just want to understand that, uh, you know, you know, overall for your margins, will that 
uh, you know, will it be a hit? Also, going forward, what is the average that you're looking at in terms of an operational band uh, for CCL products, not just in the next year, but over the next couple of years? Uh, so, as far as uh, spray dry is concerned, compared to freeze dry, the margins are uh, slightly lesser. Okay. Yes. Oops. And uh, we we are also going in for a freeze dry expansion uh, in Vietnam, and this freeze dry expansion also is expected to be completed in two thousand twenty four. So that will average our margins to more or less the same levels that we have uh, we've had in the past. Right, uh, you know, 60,000 ton volume by FY26 end is your projected target. Um, what uh, roughly would be the EBITDA per ton out there? So, it's uh, so actually about 77,000 tons that we will have uh, as a group for mm. India and Vietnam uh, put together. And uh, the EBITDA, so EBITDA per kg is approximately in the range of about 100 rupees or so. So, is... we're not looking at much of a change over there. Exactly. And so that is basically, uh, you know, standard and it is uh, maintained uh, throughout, right? So that's about yes. lakh rupees per ton and yeah. multiply that by seven, uh, 77,000. That's your volume target, right? Yeah. So that's the kind of EBITDA that you're looking at in FY26. And the FMCG Correct. business, once again, um, uh, you know, uh, what kind of revenue targets that you have out there? Of course, you've given us a target for your branded business, but the adjacencies, are you targeting any sort of revenue mix there? And how much are you willing to invest without making profit for growth here? So right now, the we've already had a break-even for our domestic business and uh, we're looking at growing in a profitable manner going forward. Uh, the, the focus is still going to be on volume growth. So uh, it's not that uh, we're going to let go of the volume growth uh, as a primary focus. And whatever new products that we are introducing, depending on the product category, we are allocating a budget specifically for that particular category. And we're evaluating the performance and then we'll take a call whether we want to further up the budget or uh, reduce it in the subsequent year. Okay, got it. Uh, we'll leave it at that, Chalas. Thanks a lot for joining in and talking about uh, one of our favorite topics, coffee, <laughs> and the growth that you're seeing in uh, some of the other spaces as I'm well. I'm personally more interested in uh, what he brings alongside coffee because, mock you know, meat? if he brings, <laughs> not mock meat so much, but if he brings cookies, cakes, or all the other things that go along with coffee, bread, maybe, how, oh, that, that would be a valuation driver for the company because it starts to look like an FMCG company as mm. against be just a commodity company. But for me as a customer, I would love another cookie maybe. Okay, a cup of coffee and uh, a cookie, right? Yes, Always most works. definitely. Okay, well, uh, let's do one thing. Let's take a quick uh, break on that note. That was CCL products and the management. But when we come back from the break, lots more lined up. We'll put the focus on Electra, Green Tech and Mahindra CIE. Both those stocks having a big run this afternoon. More on that in a bit. Okay, welcome back. Well, uh, there's lots happening at the moment. The NCLAT order on Z Entertainment is out and that's the reason why you're seeing the stock up about 2.5%. There's a big relief that has come in for Z. The NCLAT has stayed the order, directing for initiation of insolvency proceedings. And since the stay on the order has come through, there is a big relief that you're seeing on the Z stock, up almost about 2 odd percent or so. Now, uh, you know, there was, of course, this big overarching or rather overhang about what happens with the merger. Does it go through? in its entirety? Does it see timely completion? The management of Z Entertainment, uh, Puneet Goenka, has come on record and said that they will ensure that the uh, completion of the merger goes through uh, in terms of both the timeline as well as, you know, all the uh, required uh, reasons for the completion. And now this relief has come through, so perhaps that's giving some, um, uh, you know, some ray of hope for investors, although the, the stock has been really very volatile over the last many days. Uh, it's not done just yet. I mean, the relief has come through for now, but what happens next in the legal proceedings, etc., all of this 
to and fro could still put a question mark on the merger timeline, but I assume. When that happens, we'll have mm. to watch out for. But, you know, immediately it is a big relief coming mm. in from, uh, uh, you know, uh, the NCLAT because the NCLT, NCLT had uh, put in, uh, you know, the insolvency proceedings on the company on uh, uh, on initiation by Indusin Bank that after Z had appealed yesterday itself, the NCLAT has heard that appeal and they've stayed that proceeding. So as a result of which, Z can now go ahead and complete the merger. The merger was actually, uh, you know, being stopped primarily because of the fact that it was in uh, the IBC process. So as a result of which, you're not allowed to go ahead and sell promoter stake or, you know, merge with another company, etc. Now this comes in, this provides a way for the merger. We will, of course, await the formal order. But this is what we hear from the NCLAT right now. Our correspondents are getting this for you. Importantly, from a stock standpoint, it will also be interesting to see if the exchange goes ahead and reverses its stance on excluding Z from FNO. Because the reason what the NSE had given was uh, the, the Z shares would be excluded from futures and options trading, mm -hmm. primarily because of the IBC proceedings against the company. But if the NCLAT itself has stayed the insolvency proceedings, proceedings, then uh, does that stance get reversed as well or not is the big question. But the stock, as uh, Sonia pointed out, has seen a big relief rally from the lows itself, mm. currently at the high point of trade. Absolutely. I mean, 1.5% higher now. The stay will also ensure that lenders, A, don't take over the company. Mm and B, the merger process goes through. So that is the reason why Z had approached the NCLAT to get a stay. Uh, also, you know, uh, the Z uh, management has argued that the NCLAT didn't give them a fair hearing earlier as well. Uh, so these are a couple of things. Remember, the company, Z Entertainment, is almost debt-free. It hasn't defaulted on any of its loans. It was only providing comfort to Indescent for a loan to City Networks, which is a group company. And that arrangement was called a debt service reserve account. So Z was obliged to keep one quarter's interest and principal in that account. So when City defaulted, Indicent asked Z to pay and this matter was what went through in the Delhi High Court. So at the moment, of course, a, a big relief for Z Entertainment and, um, you know, now this day ensures that uh, the lenders don't take over the company. Right. So perhaps the merger process will go through. That is one. And the other thing is that maybe the reason why, while the stock has recovered from the lows, but the gains are not, you know, uh, mm -hmm. high and uh, flourishing is because this is, it, it, while it is a relief, it's an interim relief because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the NCLD NCLAT will hear the issue on March 27th and I'm, uh, I understand maybe two days from then, March 28, 29 or whenever, we'll get the final order. So for now, it is an interim relief. It is not uh, the final, uh, you know, relief that has come in from the NCLAT. Uh, but interim relief, nevertheless, is what the street takes. And uh, we will uh, await more details mm. coming by from uh, uh, Ashmit, who will get us more details. But NCLAT mm. will hear the case again on March 27th. So maybe the final order will take a few mm. days. And as a result of which, you know, because it was an interim relief, we've seen the stock, while it recovered, it, it's also come off from the highs because the street will like more clarity on the final order coming in mm. as against just the interim relief. Uh, and this has gone on for so long, right? I mean, it's a big hurdle in the merger process. I think that's what the street has also priced in. If you look at the stock, uh, if you pull up a one-year chart of the stock, the high of Z was around 300 rupees in March of 2022. And it's now, what, 197. So there's definitely um, a a lot of volatility, a lot of pressure, wealth erosion, etc. in the stock. But let's see, uh, momentary relief coming through for Z Entertainment. Let's slip into a short break. We'll get you more details. We'll get our colleague Ashmit in on what's the next for Z uh, and more, some, more stock specific action as well on the other side. Welcome back to Halftime Report. Let's talk about some buzzing stocks now. Mahindra CI is really on a tear this afternoon. In fact, it's at a fresh 52 week high. Uh, the company had a conference call yesterday and this was post-market hours and they were really bullish on the way forward. Uh, they said that they are confident that they will continue to grow ahead of the industry and uh, the confidence comes because key customers like uh, Maruti, m, m and Tata Motors have new launches and have expanded their capacity which means more business for Mahindra CIE. Now in the European business they are set to deliver more than 10% growth and that's important because Europe was under a lot of pressure but this quarter there's been a turnaround in Europe. They say the new plants in Hosur and Rajkot are already in the process of getting operational and because of the falling power costs in Europe, there is a further margin expansion that they are looking at. So, in Europe, the power cost has now declined to 140 euros per megawatt. Uh, this compares to a high of 400 euros per megawatt pre-September 2022. So, that's a steep fall, which means better margins for them. The stock is up almost about 9% doing pretty well in trade. 
It is doing well in trade, but uh, you know the market's taken a sudden uh, dip towards uh, the south right now. The Nifty is actually uh, closing in on that 17,450 mark as we speak, down 43 points. When we started the show, it was absolutely flat. Currently at the low point of trade, what's taking it lower? HUL. Uh, the intraday chart of H2, HUL comes up for you. Uh, that's uh, fallen to the low point of trade. LNT is the other one, which has also fallen about 2% from the highs. Currently at the low point for that counter as well. And ITC, after hitting almost 400 in yesterday's trading session, has seen some profit taking. So from yesterday's high, it has corrected a fair bit, almost 10, uh, 12 odd rupees currently at uh, the low point for that counter as well. So these are stocks which are not doing too well. The Nifty Bank, surprisingly, however, uh, has outperformed the Nifty after underperforming it for the last four or five trading sessions. So the Nifty Bank is absolutely flat. So it is these non-banking names, uh, non-banking heavyweights on the index which are taking it lower. Just uh, pulling up Reliance as well while it's holding up in the green. It's also off its highs by almost a percent. So by the sheer weight that uh, the stock has on the index, the Nifty is down almost 45 points. Oh, absolutely. Uh, so I guess the sell-on rally is something that continues even today. Uh, so not looking good for the markets. But uh, let's get Z Entertainment back. There was a momentary relief on the stock, but now that's gotten sold into uh, the NCLAT, as we told you, have, has granted interim relief to Z, protects it against the initiation of the insolvency proceedings. Uh, the next hearing will be on the 29th of March. Uh, so we're going to wait uh, for more details on that. But in the meantime, let's get my colleague Ashmit into the picture to uh, give us more details. Okay, in a bit, we'll go to Ashmit. But for now, let's take a quick break. On I mean, as far as uh, Z is concerned, this is a big sore point. As far as Z was concerned, they moved her. In fact, Puneet Goenka was the formal applicant before the NCLAT. A whole host of arguments essentially had been made. Uh, there were basically arguments that narrowed down to two points. Number one, a uh, point that was made essentially uh, by Z is that, look, uh, we are not a corporate guarantor for the entire debt amount of city uh, that it is only to the extent of marginal interest payments and only to that limited extent uh, that in fact uh, Z is a guarantor to the extent that it will have to refill any shortfall in interest repayments and that too of a single tranche and that was the argument made and that's as far as the merit of the case is concerned the other part is and this is a legal argument that was forwarded by Z is that as far as the NCLT proceedings are concerned they were not allowed a hearing. Uh, Z was not allowed an opportunity to defend itself, uh, to defend itself against initiation of insolvency proceedings, and therefore had asked for setting aside or for a stay of the NCLT order. Now that appears to have been an argument that resonated with the NCLAT, the appellate tribunal right here in New Delhi. The NCLAT held uh, that at no point did Z forfeit its right to make submissions to argue its case against initiation of insolvency proceedings. The fact that those arguments have not been taken on record by the NCLT have now uh, direct led to the NCLT uh, staying the NCLT order. So as of right now, the main takeaway here is that the initiation of insolvency proceedings, which had been directed by the NCLT, has been stayed by the appellate tribunal. This is a very clear direction. Uh, the, Supreme, uh, the NCLAT has now said uh, that notice will be issued to Indusind Bank. They'll be asked to come back with a reply. The next hearing in this case uh, will be on March 29th. So till then, Z is protected against initiation of these uh, insolvency proceedings. What we will, however, have to watch for and track going further is whether or not Indusind Bank now takes this fight to the Supreme Court. After the appellate tribunal, the appeal lies before the apex court of the country. We now have to see whether or not Indusind makes use of that legal remedy and whether there's may more pain in store for Z if this case travels uh, to the top court of the country. Till then, mm. uh, relief coming in for Z, the NCLAT staying in solvency proceedings. Okay, thanks a lot for that. Well, short-term relief, it seems. The stock is under a bit of pressure. I mean, it, it, re it recovered a bit, but now it's selling off as well. So volatile, as has been the nature in the past many days. But let's slip into a short break. For now, the market as well is under a bit of pressure. There's uh, F uh, metal stocks, which are, you know, top of the list as far as losers are concerned. Hindalco, JSW Steel, Tata Steel, all in the red. But when we come back from the break, we have with us here in the studio Manoj Menon, the head of research and FMCG analyst at ICICI Securities. So do stay, in, stay tuned in for that conversation. Half time report and let's uh, put the focus on the consumption space now. I mean, it's uh, we've been talking about it for a while. It's a Friday, uh, relatively relaxed afternoon post the earnings season as well. So uh, we thought we'll get in uh, Manoj Menon, who is currently the head of research and uh, has been tracking the consumption space for over 15 years now. So what's the call on not just FMCG, but the entire consumption basket? Manoj, uh, a pleasure having you in our studios. Uh, you know, the big question is, what exactly is taking place in the space right now? What are the key trends that are emerging? There's so much happening. 
Can you just draw lines from the segments, the dots that we are seeing everywhere? Manglam, thanks. Uh, uh, you know, so I will put it into two parts. Uh, you know, the, the trends part of it. Uh, so over the long term, what I've actually seen is that uh, you can observe some trends uh, in consumer staples or FMCG. Uh, but having said that, when it comes to discretionary, it's always better to look at bottom up, right? Okay. So let's cover the trends on the consumer staples space to begin with, right? What we're finding is that uh, there is a stress on consumption uh, in the bottom of the pyramid, mm -hmm. very clearly, right? Mm -hmm. Irrespective of the categories, irrespective of the companies also, right? That's point number one. The reason appears that, uh, uh, you know, the inflation seems to have impacted the bottom of the pyramid consumer, right? I really don't think there is any solution for that, uh, you know, from a macro point of view at this point in time. That's point number one. Point number two, uh, you know, most consumer staple companies uh, have had significant price growth uh, in the last 12 to 18 months. That also seems to have impacted some down trading, some consumers dropping off, which you can see in the volume, uh, you know, performance. Mm. So that's one. When it comes to discretionary, uh, I would rather say that, uh, you know, let's say the trend for a jewelry continues to be very strong. Mm. Trends, let's say demand for an apparel retail continues to be very strong, right? Or let's say even uh, when you look at a footwear companies, right? For example, a Metro Brands mm. is performing very well, right. especially at retail. But whereas, uh, you know, uh, Relaxo kind of possibly struggling, mm -hmm. right? The answer is same, similar to consumer staples, right? Relaxo targets the mass market, whereas mm -hmm. Metro is mid and premium, premium, right? So, and, and if you look at spirits, for example, right? I mean, I don't know whether to put it in staples or discretionary, <laughs> brand of the rate is consumption, <laughs> right? Or, 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 or cigarettes, right? We, we are not really seeing any trends mm -hmm. in terms of this dis relation there. And for example, Hina Nagarajan, uh, MD of United Spirits on record, to say that the premiumization continues to be at the same rate as what it was 12 or 24 months back or even better. Mm. So there is no downtrading there actually. Mm. And that's right. what they so, say, right? For the vices, you don't... Uh, I, you don't back. stop irrespective don't stop. of whether you're uh, you're getting hit by inflation or not. But Manoj, uh, pleasure to see you here in the studio. Uh, you know, uh, you've tracked this space, as Mangalam was saying, for I think 15, 16 years now. I'm sure yeah. you've seen many other, uh, many earlier cycles of a slowdown. Is it transient in nature? If yes, do you feel that there is, uh, we are close to the mature stage of the down cycle? Mm. Uh, where are we in the cycle now? On the staple side, uh, uh, we reckon that uh, we are at the fag end of uh, the deceleration, okay. right? Uh, for two reasons. Point number one, uh, if we assume that the commodity inflation or the commodity index has peaked, right? It is logical to assume that, uh, you know, there will be price stability. Hmm. And more importantly, there will be some price cuts also going hmm. into the next 12 months, right? Which means demand rejuvenation can actually happen, right, in consumer staples. When it comes to discretionary, it does appear that uh, we are in the early stages of a deceleration. Mm. And history tells you that, you know, typically any deceleration uh, or, or can slow down in discretionary can't be a one quarter issue, right? And we right. have just seen that starting from September. Mm. So possibly this is an year of, let's say, FMCG over discretionary, mm. right? I mean, from a relative point of view, mm. right? So, uh, you know, while uh, you've been tracking this and uh, a lot has changed in the last two years or three years, which hasn't in the last, 10 years or so. Right. You've had the advent of new age companies. There is, uh, you know, new channels emerging online, quick commerce, etc. So with all these things right now, what are your thoughts on the existing incumbent large players and the valuations that they trade at? Is it investable right now? The answer is yes. Uh, okay. You know, but at the same time, uh, you got to be very careful about uh, which companies you choose, right? Mm -hmm. uh, um, let's talk about consumer staples to begin with, or FMCG to begin with. Now, all of us know that there is an investment winter going on at this point in time, mm -hmm. correct? But at the same time, there have been a, there has been a few companies, right? Uh, let's say take the case of a Honasa, which filed for a DRHP a few months back, etc., who have genuinely created a business out there. Now, whether mm -hmm. it is sustainable or not, obviously time will tell, right? And there is a bunch of companies which have actually created. They have a business model. Mm -hmm. The second point is important to understand that uh, uh, you know, with Google search and trends, etc., there is definitely a democratization of marketing insights, right? right? Mm -hmm. So it's not really difficult to start a business and get you a ten million dollar revenue, for example, right, or a twenty million dollar revenue. The question is, how do you scale it up. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Now comes to the incumbents, right? If you look at consumer staples in India over the last 20 years, right, they've actually grown by using P&L, mm -hmm. right? There is really no balance sheet requirement because mm -hmm. in India, consumer staples operate on negative working capital, mm -hmm. right? You don't really need a balance sheet to grow. In our view, which is a published view uh, over the last 24 months yeah. or so, is, uh, is that we, we very strongly believe that uh, this is a decade of bolt-ons. Mm. Let's say, if you, if you go back and see the history in the 90s, right, HLL in those days, before it became HUL later, mm. Uh, had a string of acquisitions. Yes. Mm. Tomco and Pons and Brookbond and Lipton and there's been a bunch of acquisitions which Quality. HLL did, right? 
we are of the view that uh, you know we have only seen let's say natural buying gsk is just a cotton racer or a trailer mm -hmm. right you will see significant volt on so the next 10 years for example tata consumer a company right. which we like and we cover uh, we are of the opinion that a significant portion of growth in this decade for a tata consumer will actually come from mmds apart from organic from, growth sorry? mergers and acquisitions mergers and acquisitions okay got that you know we are running out of time but i have so many questions but what really tops my mind is what's happening with the new age tech companies and i know you track a lot of them zomato nike there is this whole you know chatter about this path to profitability right and some of them have delivered yeah. but um, if you had to separate the men from the boys uh, which are the ones you like no no we actually cover both okay. and we like both at this point in time okay. Uh, but that said uh, uh, you know nike is down 70% from the peak mm -hmm. right maybe similar number for zomato also now our view actually is it's a valuation call at this point in time to begin with to say that let's say for example something we have published recently is about let's say 100 rupees is a fair value for the beauty business in a nike yeah. right in a bear case right so i think at this point mm -hmm. both zomato and nike actually are viable all right and uh, in the consumer space three topics what do you have uh, hindustan lever itc and nestle on okay. the consumer staple side on discretionary side we like metro go fashion and safair all right uh, metro go fashion and safair foods safair, safair foods. foods okay all right thanks a lot for joining in really a uh, pleasure speaking to you and Thank you should come more often to uh, here in the studio we would appreciate that thank uh, you Well that's uh, a talk an in-depth talk on the FMCG industry and the reason for the consumption slowdown let's slip into a quick break on the other side we'll move to commodities Manisha Gupta joins in she has with her Abhishek Rastogi founder Rastogi Chambers Mr Rastogi thank you so much for joining us and the conversation is on a news break that came in from my colleague Tim C this is on sugar exporters now approaching Gujarat high court on denial of the road tap benefits this has been done since 1st of June 2022 and the the, the denial also comes in as the sugar has been moved from ogl to under restricted category it is now on quota basis and is the reason there is no benefit that the sugar exporters until now were deriving out of this mr sogi first of all what's your sense because the law is quite clear on the fact that whatever is in a restricted category does not get the benefit of road tap but with the sugar exporters now approaching gujarat uh, high court what's your sense on where does the case really stand i think we will have to understand the entire controversy from Two, three perspectives. One, what is the objective of this road tax scheme? This is remission of duties and taxes for exported products. Now, this scheme is as per the WTO norms, and the objective of this scheme is that the export competitiveness of Indian exporters have to be at par when we are compared to different countries, especially our neighboring countries. at the same time the objective remains that there must not be any tax cascading which happens so any element of input taxes which are not recovered by the indian exporters there is a scientific mechanism to derive the percentage of those taxes and hence these exporters are eligible it could be different rice would be okay. at 1% sugar will be at 0.5% and i am reiterating the fact that this is all as per the wto global norms today so india is working today as mm. per the global standards sure uh, now let's come to the problem mm. the problem is that of course this category of sugar has moved from free category to restricted category and that was to ensure that the domestic demand of sugar the price of sugar for indigenous consumption is not raised and you know there is appropriate supply so we need to maintain the amount which we export outside hmm. and hence when these exports now happen these happen with permission these happens with quota limits right. so if i am a manufacturer of 1000 tons my quota could be only 60 tons to export it hmm. which means that i will have to supply both in domestic market to cater to the domestic needs and export now this restriction from the perspective of quota has come to meet the domestic demands but that does not mean that this restriction would give me the side effect of denial of the road tax scheme or the remission of duties because that is as per the global standards right. that is as per the wto norms mm. and hence today what we are arguing before gujarat high court is that the objective of the scheme which is framed to keep global competitiveness in mind which is in line with the principles of the indian constitution that taxes cannot be exported okay can this benefit be denied 
to the Indian sugar exporters is the short question which we are raising before the honourable. Absolutely, I get that. Abhishek, also, uh, you know, this is again as per what Tim C said that the Gujarat High Court has now asked the government of India, DGFT and CBIC to respond. So, how many days do they get? And and the and the valid question that you're posting as well. Uh, how do you see all of these agencies responding to this? So, I think. Uh, our government has been very pragmatic when it comes to exporters. I think, to me, it feels that this was an unintended omission. They wanted to control the export of sugars. But to do that, there is some uh, lacuna which has been left in the foreign trade policy. We must need, and the government will uh, completely realize it through audit petitions, is that the Appendix 4R, which prescribes the rate of remission for the export of sugars, is still unamended, which means that mm. the intention somewhere is to give benefit to our Indian sugar exporters, that is one. And even for that matter, if we see prohibited goods, prohibited goods are defined. Now, if you meet the conditions, you can export even prohibited goods and get all the benefits. Now, restricted category is not as harsh as <laughs> prohibited goods. And hence, the moot point which arises is that if restricted goods are allowed to be export with conditions, will these fall within the restricted category at all? So I think while uh, the respondents will file a uh, counter affidavit to our petitions, sure. but I think keeping the pragmatism in mind, there will we are expecting a solution uh, from the government. So not all hope is lost when it comes to sugar as an industry. Okay, thanks a lot for that. Uh... Uh, to both of you. Uh, well, for now, let's take a short break on that note. On the other side of the break, more on the markets, which is under pressure now. Uh, so the Nifty is now the lowest point of trade. The sell-on rally is something that has uh, taken place once again. Sensex is now inching towards almost a 200-point cut. More on that in a bit. Before the break, it is not a good scene if you are a bull in the market today. The Nifty is now down 80 points. The Bank Nifty is down 70 points. And you know, the real pressure really is uh, coming in, uh, you know, a lot of the heavyweight names. So... This time, if you look at it, ITC, LNT, Tata Steel, HDFC, HCL Tech, all the blue chip names are under pressure anywhere between 1 to 2 percent. And now the advanced decline ratio has also moved in favor of the declines. So we were telling you earlier in the day that um, there is a lot of data coming out from the US later in the evening. The global markets have been weak. So perhaps traders may not want to keep their positions open. And a lot of selling is what you're seeing in the market right now. 250 points gone on the Sensex. Sell on rally continues. With that, it's a wrap on Halftime Report. Thanks a lot for watching. Business Lunch will take the action ahead.